Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today, I'm gonna take the BBSHD motor off of my e-bike because it's just getting too heavy. I got too many batteries on this thing. There's too much going on. This hub motor that I've got in the back, uh, you know, works really well. I've also got a, front, a hub motor over here in the front wheel now too. And at this point, the mid drive is largely unnecessary. So I'm gonna take it off of this bike. I think I need to do a little bit of maintenance on it because I've been riding it like two or three years at this point. Um, it does feel like there's a little bit of like play in a bearing or like I need to open it up and do some maintenance and grease it and stuff. It's getting a little bit noisy and I might put it on a different bike. So if I take the BBS HD off of this bike, it's gonna be like 15 pounds from the motor coming off. And then I had a, a triangle battery that I was using for it too that was another 15 pounds. So if I take this off and the battery's off, so that's 30 pounds that's coming off of this bike. It's gonna be a lot lighter. Uh, and I should it should be more efficient getting around with the hub motors when there's 30 less pounds on the bike, right? And so I've never done a BBSHD installation video. So this is gonna be kind of like doing it backwards, right? So it's already installed and I'm gonna take it off. But if you wanna install a BBSHD, it's just like flipping everything around kind of and watching it in reverse, I guess. So the first step in getting this thing off is I wanna get these crank arms off. It's got a square taper spindle in the motor that these crank arms are on so first thing we gotta do is get this get this bolt out of here that I already loosened up that's just just kind of like a dust cover for the crank arms and then I take my and then we've got our crank arm puller and you can see that I've how you use this thing is there's this guy right here that kind of screws up and down this piece. So you want it to go like flush with that thing at the end that pushes. And then so you thread this thing into your crank arm. Try not to cross thread it or anything. Cause if your, if your cranks get stripped out, it's gonna be hard to get them off. Oh, and then we can take our crank puller, kind of screw it in there until it gets tight and hold the pedal. Uh, keep tightening. Uh, keep tightening on this crank arm puller. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. There it comes. Oh, those things are usually on there. Oh, pretty good. Okay, so now that guy's loose, that came off of the spindle. And we can remove our crank arm puller. All right, so that's my drive side crank arm. I gotta do the same thing over on the, the non-drive side, the left side of the bike. I'm just gonna skip that part of the video because I just showed you how to do it on one side. It's the exact same on the other side. So I'm gonna do that quick. So I got both of the crank arms off now. At this point, I'm gonna grab this chain by the bottom, pull the derailleur arm forward a little bit, and then we're gonna take this chain off of the chain ring. So there's no tension on the chain ring, and then we've got our motor free to move here. Oh man. And it is just, it's not moving very good. Like, it feels, it feels really rough. Listen to that. It feels really rough. So, and it's actually hard to, like, it's hard to notice these noises and, like, this resistance and, like, the not smoothness until you get, like, the crank arms and the chain off and everything and you can just spin it on its own and it's like, 
Yeah, that doesn't sound good. We got to do some maintenance. So, uh, yeah. So now we got to go around to the other side because that's where all of the lock rings are that hold the motor on. And so the tools that you need to get the Bafang uh, lock rings on and off, there's this deal that's got like these four notches. That's for the inner lock ring that actually holds the motor on. And then there's an outer lock ring that's kind of like decorative. And you use this. And you gotta torque these lock rings on there really good. So I usually bang on it with like a rubber mallet and these are the tools that I use on this part. All right, so here is the outer lock ring that I was talking about. It's this guy right here. This, this goes on there uh, like this. And then you just loosen it off. I'm going to have to use the mallet because it's still on there really good. And then you can just screw that guy off once it's loose. And then on the inside, we've got this inner lock ring that we use the four that we use this tool for and it's still on there pretty good this is the you got to make sure that this lock ring doesn't come off of this bbshd spindle the shaft here or the motor can get loose and then it's going to want to spin opposite the rotation of the chain so it's going to want to go zoop and then spin up and hit your down tube so I have this stabilizer bar that goes in there and it holds onto these two bolts of the motor and then it comes up here to the down tube and it's got a hose clamp that holds it in place and this stabilizer and I, it's just a piece of metal that I bent in the vise that kind of bends over the down tube and then so this thing even if this lock ring comes loose motor shouldn't be loose because this arm is still there so that's what that's for but right now we're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to taking off this lock ring that's full of dirt and hard to get the little teeth into kind of uh, okay so I've got the tool in there and we're gonna bang on it the mallet loosening it and get it in there again so now this lock ring the inner lock ring is coming loose and so if you're installing the motor guys, this inner lock ring is the required one, right? And I think you're supposed to torque it to like 60 Newton meters, which is equivalent to just banging on it pretty hard with a rubber mallet. The outer, the outer lock ring isn't necessary. So depend, depending on the width of your bottom, your bike's bottom bracket shell, the threads might be sticking out not as much and you might not have as many threads and you might only be able to get this one on there But this is the only one that's necessary This other one takes a little bit of extra room on the threads It's not necessary, but it just kind of like it's kind of like looks better, right? It's like cosmetic. So That's just a note about the installation So now that we got that out we're going to loosen up these two bolts here and then I'm going to loosen up the bolt on the hose clamp so that I can take the stabilizer bar out. So we got a five millimeter Allen here that we're going to get these off with and they weren't very tight at all. They were kind of hand tight. Let's see. Yeah, they were just hand tight. Those were. So I want to tighten those up every once in a while. I sure didn't. And so if you're installing the motor guys and like you need sometime on the fat bike version of the BBS HD, it's got like this little spacer in here. But basically like if there's, if your stabilizer bar 
is coming over to your BBS HD and it's not straight, you can put some spacers in there, like some little washers to kind of fill in the gap. When I bought the fat bike size BBS HD from Luna, it came with those little spacers and they're gonna fall out in a second here. Let's see. So here's the bolt, here's the spacer. So this is kind of our one of our drive side, or the non-drive side, uh, you know, M5 bolts that go in there. So I'm gonna take that, take that other one out now. Make sure the spacer doesn't go bouncing on the floor somewhere that I can't find it. Okay, so now that we've got our now that we've got our bolts out, you can see that the BBS HD is just like loosey goosey in the bottom bracket, and it's able to rotate like that. And that's what you don't want when you're actually riding this thing, right? So make get a stabilizer bar. Make sure these. Make sure the lock ring's tight. Make sure your stabilizer bar is staying on there. Um, and the stabilizer bar is, again, it's just kind of a backup. So if any of this other, the stock lock rings and stuff comes loose, like that stabilizer bar shouldn't go anywhere. All right, so now that we got that out, we can slide the motor out of the bottom bracket shell that way. All right, so we're back around on the drive side. We've got... everything all loose so this should just slide out of my bottom bracket shell see there it comes we got some like surface rust going on in there uh still coming still coming and actually i gotta snip the zip tie first or that's gonna be a problem where where are my things Alright guys, so one of the most useful tools in the e-bike builder arsenal is the flush cutters. Or diagonal cutters, or whatever you want to call them. You need these guys for cutting zip ties. Because when you cut zip ties, they're just as sharp as whatever you cut them with. So you don't, you don't want to hurt yourself on zip ties. But, so we're gonna, we got some wires. It looks like my, uh... My speed sensor has some zip ties going here, so we're gonna clip those out, get those out of the way. So that's one of them. We got one over back here on the chain stay. And then, uh, let's see. Looks like there's one more that I gotta get back here. Okay. And then over here on my speed sensor, I'm just gonna snip it off as well. And just so you can kind of see how the speed sensor was set up, it's I don't know if you can see through the spokes, but it goes back here, the speed sensor goes back here on your, your chain stays, and you kind of align it, and then you put a magnet on the spokes, and then so when the spokes are moving around, it's got the hall sensor in there that kind of detects that magnet and knows that your wheel is moving, and that is how the BBS HD calculates your speed. It's not the most accurate speedometer, because there's only one, uh, you know, one hall sensor pulse, one magnet on your wheel. So it only gets a hall sensor pulse like once every time the wheel goes around. And the, the, the speedo on the BBS HD isn't exactly real time. It's like slightly delayed. But anyway, so that's the speed sensor. It's just coming straight out of... It's one of the wires that comes out of the BBS HD. This part of it, this part of it unscrews. It's got kind of a waterproof connector there and it unscrews. So there's that 
All right, but back to taking the BBS HD out. So now, as long as all the wires are clear, we should be able to take this thing out. Uh, so on my bike, sometimes you have to space, you have to f fill in a gap depending on the size of your bike's bottom bracket shell that this thing goes into. So on my bike, this is a Mongoose Dolomite, I have... It looks like three spacers on the drive side is how I had mine spaced out and that... I think I did that so that the crank arms would clear the chain stays on my bike. So those are the, the, and these are bottom bracket spacers. It looks like I've got about six millimeters of bottom bracket spacers, but it depends on your bike. So I'm gonna take those bottom bracket spacers out and put them down here. All right. UBS HD is looking it's looking, it's got some surface rust on there. I'm gonna have to clean this thing up a little bit. I've definitely used it. It's, it's seen some shit. So then over here, this, this, so we got some wires coming out of the BBS HD. This is a speed sensor like we talked about. Then I've got, this is the main like DC power, the positive and the negative going into this XT60 male connector. This is your shift sensor. The BBS HD doesn't always come with a shift sensor, but I think it's kind of the same thing as the brake cutoff line. So you can always use a Y splitter and then just wire your shift sensor into the brake cutoff, I think. And over here, this is a main wiring harness that connects to this 1T, I think it's like a 1T4 wiring harness that goes up to the display on these. So, so this is what, this is what it looks like coming from the BBS HD. It's just got one, two, three, four, five, six, like eight pins in there for the main wiring harness. So that's the BBS HD off of my bike oh man it does not feel good it does not feel good like it's it's kind of like it's kind of hard to especially when it's freewheeling there's like there's like a lot of resistance and then you can just you can just hear like it just sounds bone dry in there and like a bearing might be a little uh there might be like a dying bearing or something so i gotta do some maintenance on this and i might put it on a, i'm probably gonna put it on a different bike when i fix it so that's the bbs hd well it looks like this i still got the chain ring on it but it's it's like a considerable amount of weight. It's got to be at least like 12 pounds or like 15 pounds or something. I do have the chain ring on there. But so let's look inside the bottom bracket shell and see what it looks like in there. I kind of got to clean that out, I guess. Oh man, this thing. Oh. So the bottom bracket shell needs a cleaning. It is quite rusty and dusty in there. So I'm gonna have to clean that out. And then once I clean it out, I'm gonna put the bike's original stock bottom bracket back in the shell since I'm not gonna use the BBS HD anymore. So I'm gonna clean this stuff up and then I'll come back. And so if you're installing a BBS HD, um, your bike is going to have a bottom bracket inside of this bottom bracket shell. 
and you're going to have to take your bike's bottom bracket out of the shell to put the BBS HD in there. So I'm going to do that in like reverse order right now where I'm going to, I took the BBS HD out. I'm going to put my bike's original bottom bracket back in there so that I can get some cranks and pedals back on here. Right? So I'm going to clean out this shell and I'll come back. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see in there, but on the threads, there's still just kind of like this surfaced rust kind of down in the threads of the bottom bracket shell that I would like to get out of there. So, or at least try to. Uh, so I've got this Rust-Oleum Rust Dissolver Gel that sprays on, clings to the surface, and works fast, and you don't causes eye and skin burns so clings to iron steel and other metals to make rust removal convenient fast and effective inhibits the return of rust creates an ideal service for painting contains phosphoric acid so you probably shouldn't do this inside i'm just going to use a little bit of it we're going to turn it on and it's a gel, so let's see. Let's squirt some of that in there. So I sprayed some rust dissolver in there. I got a glove on my hand now. I'm just gonna kinda smush that rust dissolver around and make sure that it's in all of the threads and kind of spread it around in there and then I'm gonna go do that on the other side too then I'm gonna take the glove off very fast throw that in the garbage we're gonna let we're gonna let the rust dissolver sit in there for about half an hour see what that does and come back all right guys so here's the original bottom bracket that came on the bike. These kind of thread into each side. And then there's these bearings in there for the spindle to go through. It goes like that. It's still got some grease on there from when I originally got the bike. And they're a little bit dusty and dirty. So I'm gonna take the bearings out we're going to put them in a container here. I'm going to put these in there too. And then I'm going to use some solvent to clean the grease off of those so that we have kind of a clean slate. I have odorless mineral spirits. It's definitely not odorless. That's a lie. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. Cover it up. And then we just kind of agitate it in there. Oops! So I'm just kind of wiping out the race for this bottom bracket. It's mostly just that race where the bearings go up. We want clean. Okay, so I got those bearings out of the solvent. I'm just gonna dry them off here. See, looks looks better. There's no grease in there anymore. I'm gonna wipe this axle off just to make sure that there's nothing on there. And then we're gonna take some of the Park Tool high performance grease. Pump it down in the race. Get the bearings down in there. Like so. 
Pump some more in there. Do the same with the other side. And I forget which side is which. Let's see. I'll have to figure that out. One of these is for the drive side and one of them is for the non-drive side. I'll have to figure it out based on the threading. Yeah, so we're basically just going to take this, put it back into the bottom bracket shell on my bike, get that bottom bracket back in there, and then I can put my crank arms back onto the bike and we'll have... I'm going to use this crank arm, this crank set that originally came with the bike. It looks like it's a 36 tooth chain ring or something. Okay, so here's the bottom bracket shell with all the goop in it. I don't know if you can tell, but there's like a lot of little bubbles. It already looks less rusty, so I'm gonna wipe all this rust remover stuff out of there. So I'm gonna rub, I'm gonna get all of this rust remover stuff out of there. This phosphoric acid, so be careful. Don't touch it. I'm gonna use this towel. I'm just kind of stick it in here and rub around in a circle with it. It looks a little bit better on the threads. I probably could have left it. I probably could have left the rust remover on there a little bit longer, but I want to keep this moving here today. So I'm going to wipe out the rust remover from the other side of the bottom bracket. So there's kind of the inside of the bottom bracket shell. It looks a little bit dirtier on this side than the other side, but it looks a lot better. I don't think I'm going to spend too much time and effort cleaning this out. I think this is kind of good enough. I'm just going to get some grease in there and then get the bottom bracket back in there. All right guys, so I don't remember how this damn bottom bracket goes back together, so we're just gonna eyeball it here and see if this... Ugh. All right guys, so I'm just putting the bottom bracket back into my bike. With these BSA bottom brackets, the drive side is reverse thread, is kind of all you need to remember. Okay, so it's reverse threaded. I'm just gonna tighten the drive side of the bottom bracket in reverse thread mode. The other side I threaded on and that's got the normal threading where it's righty tighty. So now I'm gonna tighten this guy up.
All right guys, so I tightened on the drive side of the bottom bracket and that's the one where it's left threaded so you can tighten it left counterclockwise to tighten that side. And then on the right side of the bottom bracket, it's just normal threaded. I'm just gonna put the janky uh, crank set back on that came with the bike. It's a 36T chain ring that I barely use, so I'm gonna put that back on. Make sure my cranks are clear and the chain stays and I have everything put together right here. All right. So now it's just a matter of getting the crank bolts back in there. I'm actually not sure where the crank bolts for these cranks went. I'm gonna have to go look. All right guys, so I don't know where the crank bolts for this old crank set are. I'm just gonna use the crank bolts from my BBS HD from now just to get these cranks back on here. get those on oh, pretty good because that's how you that's what pushes the square taper crank onto that spindle so you want to get it on there all the way okay crank is clearing my chain stays all right so I'm gonna go do the same on the opposite side so something I'm noticing is the crank set that came on this bike is a little bit janky. Like, look at how straight this, the chain guard and the chain ring stays. It's wobbling all over. So I don't think the axle's bent, but so that seems a little crazy. I don't know, whatever. We'll just deal with it for now. The drivetrain isn't super important with a hub motor. I think I'm going to try and shorten the, the existing chain. So I'm just going to pull this chain. I'm going to have to shorten the chain a little bit because this is really loose. I'm going to probably shorten the chain so that the derailleur is kind of coming forward a little bit like that. So it's probably going to be, probably going to have to take out a number of links, like four or something to get the chain short enough to where I want it, but we'll do that later. All right guys, so we're making some progress. I'm just going to put the pedals back on the crank arms. So the pedals always... Tighten towards the front, I think. Let's see here. So this is the right. Right, so I'm just putting the I'm just threading the pedals back into the crank arms. Make sure that you got the right pedal going into the right crank arm, threading clockwise. The pedals always tighten towards the front of the bike. So the drive side tightens in clockwise, but then over on the non-drive side you gotta tighten your pedals the other way. So here's the drive side one. Just gonna tighten that a little bit with the pedal wrench. And then we'll do the non-drive side pedal. All right guys, so I took the, this is the one T4 wiring harness that connects to the BBS HD. It's kind of the main wiring harness, the green ones for the display. The, uh, there's two yellow brake cutoffs and then there's a shift sensor. So I took that off, that goes with the BBS HD kit. Alright guys, so we got the cranks back on. 
I haven't shortened the chain yet, still gotta do that, but I got the battery strapped back on. So now I'm just gonna shorten the chain so that is a little bit tighter. All right, so I'm gonna break this chain with the chain breaker. All right, so hopefully you guys can see what's going on here, but so I'm just gonna break this chain. Um, and take like four links off of it probably. So we're just gonna pick a spot here. Our chain breaker. And then I'm pushing the pin out of the chain until I start to feel a little bit of resistance. And that's kind of as far as you wanna go. And you bring this thing back through. And so now we can split our chain like that. And I'm gonna take off onto, just gonna break it here and see where that brings us. Okay, so I took off this much of the chain to shorten it. And then we're going to gonna get this pedal all the way and bring this down here and get that So here we're going to join the chain back together. And then when you join the chain back together, you always got to like wrench on it a little bit just to kind of get it back in shape there or else it'll be skipping. Okay. All right. So now we shorten the chain. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. I'm going to pull it right here. Get the pedal going back. Pull this here. Get the chain on there. It's still, let's see. Let's get it in first gear. Um, that looks fine for now. Looks good. All right. So we got the chain sorted out. Let's see if my shifter works. Might have to fix the derailleur because my chain line might be a little different. So that's what I'm going to do next, is check the chain line. Alright, I'm going to check the chain line, I'm going to shift through the gears. That's really interesting. Alright, I guess we don't have to, I guess we don't have to work on the derailleur at all because the gears are still shifting properly, so I just had to shorten the chain. And I think that's it. I th uh, we got the mid drive off. It's laying down there. It's going to be a whole different cleanout project, and maintenance project. We've got the bottom bracket back in this bike. Got the crank set back on here. Everything is pedaling and shifting. I've just got one battery on the bike now. So we took like the, the we took the BBS HD off. It's like 15 pounds. And then the other triangle battery that I was using for that was like 15 pounds. So now my bike is like 30 pounds lighter and it's just got the two, the dual hub motors. And I think it's ready to go. So that was kind of the process guys of taking the mid drive off of my bike and then kind of getting my bike put back together with just a normal bottom bracket. So Hopefully if you're, I don't know, maybe that was interesting for you. And if you're installing a BBS HD, it's really just kind of like the opposite, you know, do that in reverse to put the BBS HD on. First you take off the crank arms on your bike, then you take the bottom bracket out of your bike, and then you put the BBS HD into the bottom bracket shell and you tighten up the lock rings and all that. You know, connect all the wires. And that's basically it, right? So. There's a lot of tutorials about installing the BBS HD. It's just the reverse of what I just did. 
but hopefully that was interesting. You got to see a two year old. Oh my goodness, this thing is heavy. Like this is a lot of weight guys. Like it, this is a good 15 pounds at least. So I'm gonna do a video where I do some maintenance on this thing and clean it up and open it up. And cause something's going on inside of it and it's just not, it's not spinning very smoothly anymore. So we're gonna do maintenance on the BBS HD in a separate video. I hope everyone found that interesting and I hope everybody's doing great. And I will see you next time. Peace out.